Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Tech Tuesday Roundup. And instead of looking at, you know, components and full-fledged gaming PCs like the one I have behind me in the NZXT H710, today we're going to look at the best bang for the buck old, you know, office computers, old desktops that you can end up turning into an awesome gaming PC on a budget. So for around $400, you can take one of these computers and turn it into a full-fledged gaming PC capable of playing games like Fortnite, Warzone, uh, Valorant, all over probably 60 to even 100 FPS, both at 1080p as well as 1440p. But before we get to those PCs, let's take a look at this. So 99.3% of the people who have watched my videos in the past 28 days are not subscribed to the channel. So thank you to the 0.7% of you who are. But if you aren't subscribed and you're looking forward to some more tech content like this video or some of the other PC builds that I've done in the past, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button so you can get these videos as soon as they come out. But I hope you guys enjoy. So getting started with our three small form factor desktop computers that we can turn into awesome under $400 gaming PCs, we have the HP Compact Elite 8300 small form factor PC. So this would definitely be my go-to for the cheapest option. Uh, you can get these computers for around 150 bucks with shipping, and they'll all come with third generation Intel processors. You get it both in an i5 and an i7 configuration. I would definitely recommend the i7. The i5 will offer very similar performance to the i7 in terms of gaming, just pure FPS, maybe five to 10% increase with an i7, but in other workloads where you need that hyper-threading like video editing and some other tasks, you're definitely gonna be better off with the i7. So I would recommend going with an i7 uh, if you're gonna look at building one of these computers. So let's take a look at this top one. It comes with an i7-3770, eight gigs of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, and Windows 10 Pro. So that's really the beauty of getting one of these computers is that you get Windows 10 installed on it already. You don't have to shell out $100 for Windows 10 Home and a little bit more for Windows 10 Pro. Uh, so pretty much for the cost of this computer, that's the cost of Windows 10 but you're getting a full build where all you have to do is install a graphics card. So let's take a look at this second listing. So as you can see, it's a small form factor build. So it's around the size of like an MATX PC case, but much narrower. So you're only gonna be able to fit a low profile graphics card in there. So you're either gonna have to go with the GTX 1050, a 1050 Ti or a 1650. I'd probably leave the two gigabyte VRAM 1050 behind and go with either the 1050 Ti if you can find one use cheap on eBay. Uh, but if you're gonna go for something new, I would definitely recommend the 1650. That'll give you the best performance for the money. Uh, and it comes in a low profile card as well. So it'll fit in all of these cases. So taking a look at the back, you have really, really good IO, plenty of USB ports, uh, ethernet, display port for the integrated graphics on the CPU, uh, PS2 connectors, your aux connections as well. So overall, a really, really a uh, nice set of I.O. on the back of the case, and you have plenty of USB on the front of the case as well. And then you also have a top mounted power supply uh, that's drawing in its own air and pushing it out the back. It is a 240 watt power supply, which is pretty much the case for all three of these, but that should be plenty for anything that you're gonna do on these computers. All of them are coming with either an i7-3770 or an i7-4770 or 4790, which are only gonna be able to draw around 100 watts max uh, power, uh, where the GTX 1650 Super can only pull what the PCIe slot is going to allow it, which is 75 watts. So you're looking at a max power consumption of around 175 watts. So with the 240 watt power supply, you have another like 50 watts of overhead uh, to power any of your peripherals with your USB ports, uh, power the hard drives, the motherboard, things like that. So you should definitely be well under the threshold for the power supply. And if we take a look at the inside of the case, uh, as you can see, it's super compact and easy to build in. But looking at the cooling solution, we do draw air in from the front of the case with the fan. So you're definitely gonna keep CPU temps down, but you're then blowing that hot air directly at your graphics card. So it's not the best cooling you know, setup in terms of cooling the graphics card. So your graphics card might get a little bit warm, but it definitely won't hit the thermal throttling limit. And you should definitely not see any, any significant drops uh, in performance with the graphics card. Your FPS is definitely gonna stay nice and high in whatever game you want to play. And then moving on to our second computer, uh, we're gonna take a look at the Lenovo M92P small form factor build. So you can find these on here for around $200 on eBay. 
uh, and they come again with the i7 3770. So as you can see this top one and this bottom one, the bottom one, 16 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte HDD, Windows 10 Pro. The top one, eight gigs of RAM, but a 256 gig SSD and Windows 10 Pro. So depending on whether you wanna add a hard drive down the line or you wanna add an SSD to you know put the OS on uh, down the road, we'll determine which build you go with. But let's take a look at this top one. Again, some really nice front IO. You have an SD card slot, DVD drive, two USB ports, and your aux connections as well. And then on the back, plenty of USB 3, again, a display port, USB 2, again, your microphone and headphone jack, Ethernet. So pretty much the same IO on both of these builds. And they're both laid out really, really similarly. I will show you the inside of this though, just so you can get a better idea of what the internal configuration looks like, how the cooling looks, uh, and that might sway you one way or the other, whether you go with the HP 8300, this Lenovo, or the next build I'm going to show you. So here are the internals of the computer. We just went to the second listing with the one terabyte hard drive and the 16 gigs of RAM. And as you can see, uh, it's a, another really, really nice internal uh, for the case. You have your hard drive cage where that blue piece is right there, the DVD drive, an 80 plus bronze power supply, again, rated at right around 250 watts. So the big difference is definitely gonna be the cooling between our previous build uh, and this one. So now you have a downward firing fan. So any of the internal air inside of the case is then going to be pushed down onto the CPU and then hopefully exhausted out the back of the case. But there is a little bit of room for it to come out sort of around it, but it is shielded so that the air is mostly forced out the back of the case, which is nice. Uh, and then we have, again, a PCIe slot as well as two PCI slots. But the GTX 1650 will slot in here really nicely. The other nice thing is that there is this front fan. So that'll be able to pull air in and fire it directly at the graphics card, providing it a little bit better cooling than the HP 8300. Um, so you should see slightly better temps in this case than you would in the 8300. But again, very similar in the internal layout. Uh, easy to build in. That's the main thing with a lot of these. They're super easy to upgrade. You can easily throw in a GTX 1650, upgrade the RAM, upgrade the hard drive. Everything is super accessible and easy to upgrade. The only thing that's really not, again, is definitely gonna be your motherboards and your power supplies. All the power supplies are pretty much proprietary to whether it's Lenovo or HP. And the motherboard connectors are usually proprietary as well, definitely with the HP builds. So changing out a power supply, changing out a motherboard, you're gonna have to replace it with a direct replacement from either HP or Lenovo. Finding a used one on eBay will definitely be possible, but that is just something to keep in mind with any of these builds. So now that we've gotten the 8300 and the Lenovo M92P covered and out of the way, it's time to move on to the last computer that I did an upgrade video with, and that is the HP Elite Desk 800 G1, another awesome, easy to upgrade computer that will make for a great gaming PC. And I'll also show you guys a little bit of the video of actually putting that one together, adding the graphics card, and, and actually gaming on it so you guys can get a really good idea of what the FPS will be with any of these builds. They're all featuring you know, i7 third and fourth gen CPUs, as well as the GTX 1650. And all of these can be built well under $400. So the 800 G1 is gonna be our most expensive option. It's gonna come in at around $235. Whereas the Lenovo came in at around 200 and the HP Compact Elite 8300 came in at 150 bucks. So when you take into account uh, around $160 for a GTX 1650 low profile, with the HP 8300, you're looking at around $300. With the Lenovo, you're looking at around $350. And then looking at the HP 800 G1, you're looking at around $380 to $390, but still under that $400 limit, which is really, really nice to get a gaming PC of this caliber for under $400. So to do like a full custom gaming PC with a GTX 1650 and like a similar CPU of today's standard, like maybe a Ryzen 3100X or 3300X, or like an Intel, you know, i3 four core eight thread CPU, or like their most recent i5, you're definitely going to be spending a lot more money, probably around like 600 to $750. So you're saving quite a bit of money up front to just be able to use what is already been built by an HP or a Lenovo, something that already comes with Windows 10. It comes with everything you need except for the graphics card. So getting into the 800 G1, Again, really nice front IO. You have two USB 3 and two USB 2, whereas the HP Elite 8300 only came with four USB 2, no USB 3 on the front. 
So coming around to the rear I.O., you now have four USB 2 and two USB 3, as well as Ethernet. You have an HDMI and a display port for your integrated graphics, uh, the PS2 connectors, uh, your headphone and microphone jack, and then you have the uh, power supply actually mounted on the bottom of this case, whereas it was mounted at the top on the 8300. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the video I did of the HP 800 G1 upgrade to a GTX 1650. Um, we'll take a look at the interior components as well as some gaming so you guys can get a decent idea of what you can expect on any of these computers in terms of its gaming performance. So I actually already did a build in the 800 G1 with a GTX 1650 very recently. So let me go ahead and jump to that footage to show you guys exactly what it's like to build inside of the HP 800 G1. So you have a really nice layout on the interior of the case. The DVD drive, the SSD HDD carrier sort of just lifts out so you have easy access to all of those components, which makes it easier as well to access some of the cables on the interior of the case. You have a PCIe uh, by 16 slot as well as a PCIe uh, by 4X slot. Um, so you have really all that you would need when it comes to just installing our graphics card. Maybe you want another small add-on card for like Wi-Fi or something like that. You can do that as well inside of this case. So as you can see here, I installed an SSD as well as a hard drive. So I have room for my games on the hard drive and the OS and some of the other programs can go on the SSD. The other really nice feature about this case is definitely the heatsink design on the CPU, being that all the hot air from the CPU is easily able to vent out the back of the case, meaning the other components aren't gonna be heating up too much. Uh, there's not great airflow inside of this case. You have no other fans except for the CPU fan. So when you throw in your graphics card, uh, the graphics card fans are just gonna be pulling in air from the inside of the case, meaning that any air that's coming into the case is really just gonna be generated by the CPU fan and your graphics card fans. So you're not gonna have great airflow, but you're not gonna hit you know, thermal throttling on any of the components. You'll definitely be fine when it comes to gaming. And I tested all this in this build. So if you go ahead and take a look at this video, you'll be able to see all the gaming performance and things like that uh, in more detail for sure. But I also only had an eight gig stick of RAM in this build. Most of the builds that I'm showing you come with 16 gigs. So you really shouldn't have to upgrade the RAM as well. But when it comes to the graphics card installation, so as you can see here, I went the GTX 1650, and this is definitely the card I would recommend for any of these PCs. And if we go ahead and just jump to the actual installation, it's super, super simple. You just have to pop it in to the PCI Express slot. You can watch, again, this video for a little bit more detail, but a super, super simple upgrade. You're just taking the PC, adding a graphics card, and there you go, an under $400 gaming PC that'll be capable of playing most of your favorite games well over 100 FPS at 1080p. And to take a look at some of that gameplay, just so you guys can get a quick idea of the FPS numbers, let's take a look at Valorant. You're going to expect around 115 FPS, and this is being played at 1440p, Honest GTX 1650 and the i7-4790 in the 800G1. So well over 100 FPS at 1440p so at 1080 you could probably be looking at something like 200 fps so now taking a look at fortnite at 1080p and i actually have the fps limited here to 144 fps as you can see but we're easily hitting well over 100 fps inside of fortnite at 1080p um so this is an again an awesome option for a budget gaming pc that can play all of your favorite games at high fps and finally we'll take a look at call of duty uh, so here we have Call of Duty Warzone, uh, one of the more demanding games for sure, but as you can see, we're hitting right around 60 FPS, a little bit over 60 FPS uh, at 1080p, but again, a really great way to get into PC gaming for under $400, so you can take you know, a pre-existing computer, add a graphics card to it, and be able to achieve you know, 60 FPS in a game like Warzone, which is really, really demanding on a computer, even with an RTX 2070 Super and an 8700K overclocked to five gigahertz, I can only hit 140 FPS uh, at 1080p. So to hit 60 FPS on a GTX 1650 and a 4790 is an awesome deal for under $400. So there we go guys, three compact small form factor computers that you can turn into awesome gaming PCs capable of playing your favorite games that are out right now at both 1080p and 1440p. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, any comments about any of these components, any of these builds, be sure to leave those in the comments below. Be sure to check out my build guides for both the HP 8300 and the 800 G1 in the description below. 
If you guys enjoyed the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a great deal. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Next week's episode will definitely be... If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Next Tuesday's video is definitely going to be centered around, you know, full form factor computers similar to this video uh, and what those... If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. A lot more build and upgrade videos coming your way soon. Next week's episode is going to be dedicated to the three best full form factor computers to turn into gaming PCs. So you can definitely get a little bit more graphics card horsepower into those systems. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned.